Eram namaskitam naram chevena ruptamam devim sarasatim vyasam tato jayo dirat nashta preesho bhadre su nityam bhagavata sevya bhagavati otama shakhi bhaktir bhavati naistiki nigama kapurur garitam palam shukha mukaram ita javi samitam pibata bhagatam rasamari om mahora hora sikabhuvi bhakaham krishna sadama bhagate damagiri karona stadri samasha parana koduno didaham Tamapia da Vishu to Vishu Dum before some up here and a bit ambidots and Prokahi to whom or to them, some place in Nirvana Musanti Nanyataham. O Magana Timananda Sanganagana Sadaka Chaksudin Miditam Yenitaj my Sri Gideve Namaha. See Chaitanya Manovistam, Stapi Tam Yenabutare, Sayam Rupa Karamayam Dadati Swa Padantikam. Bande hum sikadu siyata parakamanam sikadu in vaishnavam sta siyurupam sagadutam sahagana raganatam vitam stam sadevam sadvaitam savadutam parijana sahitam krishna chaitanya devam siddhadha krishna padan sahagana larita shivishakan vitam sta nama om vishnu paraya krishna pustaya bhutare srimadhi bhakti vedanta shami tinamane namaste sarasati devi goramani pacharine nirvishesa sanyavari praskata de sarani Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Shiva Sari Gaur Bhakta Vrindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare <coughs> Motivational Monday Ki Jai Good morning Sanjay Good morning Jean and all those who jumped on board with us We missed you last week My Bobby and I took five days off down in southern Utah Kanab to celebrate the uh, 50th anniversary of our wedding. We've known each other for 52 years, we figured out. Married for 50 years and went down to Canab. <clears throat> if you want to see pictures, just go down on the thread or go to the previous posts on the thread Charu, Utah. You'll see <clears throat> 10 or more pictures of our uh, week in Canab. Beautiful landscape there. The motto of the city of Kanab is the greatest earth on show. And that's not an exaggeration. Around every corner there's magic. <clears throat> there's also the Best Friends Animal Sanctuary. It's located there. Thousands of acres. Beautiful canyon country. I have at any given time 1,600 animals there who are being rescued in, and uh, up for adoption. We particularly were interested in the, the parrot section went back several times to visit that had a vegan lunch uh one day on a beautiful uh terrace overlooking uh, uh, one of the magnificent canyons there so that was monday through friday and um, we weren't with you any of the three days oh we did do Mo motivational monday before we left but we skipped <clears throat> transcendental tuesday as well as wisdom wednesday but we're back now happy to be back in Spanish Fort, Utah, as far as tourist destinations, Spanish Fort buys with the best of them. And at present, we have not one, not two, but three beautiful newly born baby llamas. And they're just uh, drawing tourists by the dozens and dozens. <clears throat> so thanks again for being with us. Thanks for your patience at our hiatus last week. We spent a record 11 sessions on the previous verse one first canto fifth chapter 13th verse so we're launching out into a new verse which will be the 14th verse in the fifth canto we will have a little interruption tomorrow because it's the appearance day of lord nishringa uh, so we'll say a few words about the half man half lion incarnation of the lord in the morning we'll have some observance here in spanish fork and a more elaborate one in the Salt Lake City Temple that'll go from 6 o'clock until 8 o'clock. If you're in an easy commute distance of, Span of Salt Lake City, uh, why don't you stop in? I promise you, you won't be disappointed. You're also welcome to join the half a dozen or so of us here who will be celebrating the evening. Oh yeah, I also forgot to mention special guest up in Salt Lake City tomorrow, Anu Tamadas, a dear friend, uh, a, a GBC member who will be passing through town and giving the talk <clears throat> tomorrow night in the Salt Lake City Temple. Oh, here we go for the first part, first discussion of this verse. Tato nyata 
kinchana yadvivakshataham pritagrishas tat krita rupana bhavihi akarichit krapichadishitamati labeta vatahata nari vashparam. Whatever you desire to describe, that is separate in vision from the Lord, simply reacts with different forms, names, and results to agitate the mind as the wind agitates a boat which has no resting place. This is Srila Vyasadeva, the author of all the Vedic literatures, being addressed by his guru, whose name is Narada Muni. Narada Muni has acknowledged, <clears throat> God, I don't know what's going on with my voice today. <clears throat> Narada Muni has acknowledged that uh, Vyasadeva has written vast and voluminous Vedic literatures. He's described transcendental realization in multitudinous ways, covered the area of fruitive activities, covered the area of speculative knowledge, the area of yogic mystic powers, and now is coming to the perfection of all of his literary endeavors, which is bhakti, anyabhilasita sunyam jnanakarmari manabhitam anukarum. It is said that your fruitive works will not be successful without uh, the spice of bhakti in the ingredients list, nor will your speculative knowledge give you satisfaction unless bhakti is there. Yogic practices are null and void without bhakti. So bhakti is the essential ingredient for success in fruitive work and mental speculation or yogic practices. However, bhakti need not be mixed. Ideally, it stands alone as the queen of all endeavors, the summum bonum of all accomplishments. If you have fruit of activities, you need bhakti in order to achieve success. Same for mental speculation, same for yogi practices, but you don't need fruit of activity, mental speculation, or yogi for bhakti, because bhakti connects you directly in service to the lotus feet of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Now, in the literatures that Vyasadeva has written, there is copious mention of worship of the demigods in different names and forms. And there are uh, uh, many, many also mentions of different scriptural injunctions and uh, imperatives <clears throat> that seem contradictory one to another. The overall result of which is that because of the vastness of the literature, um, because of the different areas uh, which it touches upon, there is confusion which has arisen as to what is my clear duty, especially in Kali Yuga, Prayana, Payasha, Shabda, Karoshma, and Manda, Samandaya, Mandavi. I don't live as long as people lived in the previous ages. I don't have as acute an intellect as people in the previous ages. Um, the, the atmosphere is polluted, the air, the water, is polluted, our lifespan is reduced to 70 or 80 years at the most. So we really need to get everything distilled. It's not gonna do us any good to have hundreds and hundreds of volumes in all different categories and areas of activities when, when all we really need is like, just the facts, man, 25 words or less. <laughs> what, what is the, the best activity in this short duration of life that we have? Maharaj brings it asked this question of his guru, Sukhadeva, Tathasthiva prichamimam vichaya vishabhya vipokriyatam sarvatmam miyananam stakitam sudha tathasthiva sata vyaktaha. Maharaj Parikit, during the last seven days of his life, talk about our shortened life, 60 or 70 years, Maharaj Parikit arrived at that point. Granted, he'd already lived, 20 or 30 years, but he reached that point in his life when he only had seven more days to live. <clears throat> and we are also, we don't know, we don't know whether tomorrow will be our day or the day after tomorrow, a week, a month. We have no idea. It could happen at any time. So best not to be cavalier about the time that we have. Follow in the footsteps of Mar Preekit. He said to his spiritual master, considering the limited time that I have available, 
And that can be said of all of us, most especially in Kali Yuga, considering the limited time that we have available. Tatashtiva prichami vimpriche visarva viparakiriram. What is the best thing for people to do of shortened lifespan, diminished intellect in this current Kali Yuga age? And especially Miniamanas Chakritam, what is the best thing? to do for a person who is about to die. Can you unmuddy the waters? Can you clarify and distill things for us? Separate the wheat from the chaff, substance from shadow, reality from illusion. One of the things that's mentioned in the next canto by his guru, Sukadeva Goswami, by the, by, by, I'm sorry, this is spoken, I believe, by the Guru Narada Muni to his disciple, Veda Vyas. Ata kavir namashu yavara tad siyara paramaya vivashaya bhuti sitheni artata na tetu yata parishamam tatra shamikshamanas. Ata kavir namashu yavara tad. Narada Muni describes this whole phenomenal world, earth, air, fire, water, mind, intelligence, and false ego. He describes this whole combination and permutation of the phenomenal world as a jugglery of names only with no real substance to it. And because this world is names and because the only real pleasure that is available in this world is a mental pleasure. People work so hard foaming at the mouth, maybe compromising ethics, um, creating for themselves a dire and dark future because of cutting ethical corners in this life in order to get what? Some sense gratification, some temporary stimulation of the tongue, the genitals, the eyes, the ears. The same sense gratification which is available, Naiham Deha Deha Bhaja Niroke Kachin Karmana Id Bhujanye. Rishab tells us the hogs and dogs, they have the same sex, the same. In fact, the, the hog has nerve endings in its snout. So when he roots through mud and dirt and garbage, just what to speak of the, the food that he has. He has not only does he have nerve endings in his snout, but he has also special taste buds. So he tastes stool and garbage as being very flavorful. And the process of um, churning up the stool and garbage, of getting it up out to somewhere where he can put it in his mouth, is achieved through his rooting. Rooting, we used to have a pot bellied pig named Rudy, Rudy, get it? Anyway, he enjoys, he's erotically stimulated by the nerve endings in his stout, snout, rooting through garbage in dirty places. And then his taste buds are such that he enjoys garbage and stool. Now that just comes with the package. If you happen to take birth in the body of a hog, you get intense stimulation from two uh, doors from two openings, from the nose, and not only does the nose smell and gives you stimulation there, but the, the nose does double duty for the hog. When you push it, it has a tact, it has sensitive tactile sense, so that it gives you a charge when you're rooting around. Not only that, you have a special nose, which does double duty, but you also have special taste buds. Who enjoys eating garbage? Who has a smile on their face when they're eating stool and garbage other than the hog? So in terms of sense gratification, the hog is much better equipped to enjoy the sensual things of this world than our, us. What to speak of, he doesn't have to work hard, he doesn't have to go to the office, he doesn't have to pay taxes, he doesn't have to pay a mortgage, he doesn't have to have a purchase rental agreement on his car. He just goes out to any, he doesn't even need, a, many people work hard so they can go off and have a weekend cabin in a beautiful country area to get out of the city. 
the starkness and the pollution of the city in order to go to an idyllic country setting like Kanab, for instance. But the hog gets its highest pleasures in the worst places. So Rishabdev says, having achieved this human form of life, that form of life which is uniquely suited for achieving bhakti, undivided, uninterrupted devotion at the lotus feet of the Lord, why would you, why would you pass on that opportunity in order to work hard, foam at the mouth, stress out, in order to achieve a shadow, a fraction of the same pleasure that the hog achieves through its nose and its mouth. Doesn't make any sense at all. And so considering that these sensual pleasures are freely available to the hogs and the dogs, the advice of Rishabdev is, if one is enlightened, if one is aware of what it is that one can uniquely do and what one can uniquely accomplish in this human form of life, then one should reduce one's efforts towards sense gratification to the bare minimum. Only that eating, sleeping, mating, defending, which is minimally necessary in order to keep body and soul together. And this is to preserve oneself, to keep oneself free from illusion, excessive, extraneous endeavor, and ultimately madness. Prabhupada says that those who are in this material world trying mightily for sense gratification are madmen. Madmen. First symptom of someone who has a higher vision is that they do not unnecessarily, extravagantly endeavor for unwanted things because they see that all these things are nothing more than names. And the pleasure that you get is only the mental pleasure of momentarily stimulation. The so-called pleasure of this material world is really just relief from suffering. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Nasato vidite bhavo, nabavo vidite sata, ube o pidrishnantash tu and nayos tatva darshan rihiv. You want to know if it's real pleasure or not? It is unending. That which is real has no cessation, and that which is false has no endurance. The stimulation that we get, the sensual kicks that we get through our nose, through our mouth, through our eyes, through our ears and by our sense of touch is certainly doesn't endure. It comes and goes. Yehi sams parshabhavaduga duka yonia adiyantava nateshu. The enlightened souls, the higher sort, the higher category of living beings, do not seek for pleasure from those sensations which have a beginning and a middle and an end. They don't waste their time endeavoring for such illusory, unwanted things. Now, those are rare. Manusyaram sashishu kaschid siddhivi yatatanam siddhivi kaschim mamvedana Out of thousands, only one may be interested in perfection. Out of thousands that are actively pursuing perfection, which is to distinguish illusion from reality. Only one may have that vision, and thousands have that vision. Only one may act according to that vision, and of thousands who act according to that vision, only one may rise to the platform of bhakti. Otherwise, everybody is trying to make their position, Prabhupada says, comfortable and secure, although nothing is more obvious than that Nothing is comfortable or secure in this material world at any stage of development. So, is this craziness? Is this madness? Everybody's trying mightily for comfort and security when all the evidence makes it completely apparent that there is no comfort and no security at any time in this material world. Mamupe, 
Chitvikantiya Dukkalayam Asasvatam Naptamati Mahatmanam Samsidim Haridam The Mahatmas do not buy into this madness because they know up front and in advance going into it this world is Dukkalayam Asasvatam This world is temporary it is not substantive it is shifting, mutating, changing. All the cells of our body die and are replaced every seven to ten years. So what you're seeing on your screen right now is a shimmer. It's constantly changing. The body that you're seeing is not the same body I had yesterday. Tomorrow's body on Transcendental Tuesday, the Shringa Dave's appear, will not be the same body that they're seeing now. It's constantly in changing. Janmada, Sari, Mebhava, Vishtadayashi, Nadpanam, Timadpanam, Kalareshwara. Time, Krishna, as time enters into everything, the most minute, Saribhutam Diramis, Kavim Parana Manushasha, Anura Niyamsha Manushma Radyat. There is no place, however small, even the nucleus of the atom into which Krishna has not entered as a super soul. And he acts in his all-pervasive feature as time. No one can avoid the passage of time. This material world is permeated and infected by time in the phases of past, present, and future. And whatever you strive for, whatever you obtain, it will be wrested from your grasp in due course of time. That body that you go into the gym, you get a six-pack, you get glutes, you get triceps, you get it all. But you have to work so hard just to maintain it, especially with the passage of time when gravity has its way with your beautiful hard-fought pecs and your tries and your buys and glutes. Everything starts sagging and going south in spite of your best efforts. Is that not a formula for frustration and disappointment? <laughs> The whole material world and everything that we can covet in it is simply a juggleration of names, only a bewildering combination of matter and spirit, earth, air, fire, water, mind, intelligence, and false ego. Bhumir apo naro kamanu ahankara, Krishna says, my material energies, which are temporary, are eightfold, five gross, three subtle. And then he goes on to say, Aparayam Tashu Anyam, Bina Prakriti Meparam, Jiva Bhuta Mahabo, Yeyam Tariya Charyakera. Above this inferior, ever changing, temporary, dark material nature, there is another higher nature. That is the spirit soul, the living entity. Just look in my eyes and you'll see the evidence of the eternal spiritual soul embodied and trapped within this body. We sing a rap song during the Festival of Colors called When I Look Into Your Eyes. The first verse was um, composed by Jai Krishna and I added a few more verses to it. You've probably heard it before if you're a regular listener. Anyway, I feel moved to talk about the higher superior energy as opposed to the lower inferior energy. When I look into your eyes, I see a shining soul. When I look into your eyes, I see a spirit soul. I see a soul that's never born a spark and never dies. You're to fly back home, back to the spiritual skies. From dust you come to dust you go. What's not spoken of the soul? It's a body like a set of clothes wears out and gets disposed. Flame of light and love gives life to the machine. Candle never snuff, subtle, sublime, unseen. For the soul there's no beginning, ending there's none. Smaller than the atom, brighter than the sun. When I look into your eyes, I see a shining soul. When I look into your eyes, I see a spirit soul. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. The inner soul continues when the outer body ends like flame from wood sparks ascending, transcending dark matter, blending with the sky, invisible to the naked eye. You cannot kill nor can you die, you cannot burn nor can you fry. The soul cannot be scorched by any blaze. No water can drown the spirit. No wind can make it fade. 
You cannot cut another, nor can you bleed. Soul is eternal, unborn, a seed, indivisible, indestructible, forever free from birth, death, old age, and disease. Yet however turned or tossed, the soul can never itself exhaust. Seated in the heart, beating its drum, powering everyone, brighter than the sun, the soul's superior force lives on and runs its endless course in God's unlimited universe. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Ram Hare Hare. As a cloud is seated on air, so spirit supports the flesh. Take away the living force, it's just chemicals lying there, a corpse naked and bare. Not a twitch or a wiggle, not a subtle wink or giggle. Can't tickle it or puzzle it with a riddle. Deaf, blind, mute, dumb, numb. Can't reward it, can't ignore it, can't restore it. Deader than a doornail, stiffer than a board. Only thing to return it, burn it, bury it. Earth to earth, dust to dust, ashes to ashes. Infirm body versus immortal soul. Learn the difference, conquer ignorance, make a spiritual choice, sing out, give voice, rejoice, make some noise for the spiritual force. Out there I say, Hari, you say Krishna, Hari, Hari, I say Krishna, you say Krishna, 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 I say Hari, you say Hari, 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 I say Rama, you say Rama, Rama. Rama, I say Hari, you say Hari, 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 Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, 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 Hari, 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 Rama, Hari, Rama, 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 Hari, Hari. So we're proceeding from lower to higher. Earth, air, fire, water, mind, intelligent, false ego. Those are the categories of matter. Above them, are the individual spirit souls, tiny particles from God, like sparks from a fire. That's you and me. We inhabit these bodies in all 8,400,000 species of life. We are cognizant like God is cognizant. We're eternal like God is eternal. We're full of bliss like God is full of bliss, but we're infinitesimal. We're qualitatively one with him, but not quantitatively. Therefore, our cognizance is limited to these bodies, the pains and pleasures of these bodies. We are not cognizant of what's going on in other bodies, in other species, in other parts of the planet, in other parts of the universe. We're cognizant, but our cognizance is, is limited. Okay, now aside from the eightfold material elements, gross, gross and subtle, and aside from the tiny infinitesimal living being, there is Ujjava Purushas Tu Anyam Paramatmita Yo Lokatriyam Bibharti Avya Ishara. There is another Chetradram Chapi besides the individual soul. There is the Supreme Soul, Udamas, and he is not limited in the same ways that we are limited. We are encapsulated, incarcerated in this dark, changing, ephemeral, shadow-like material body. However, he is utamas. He's not conditioned or subject by matter. He does not accept a material body. He is not affected by his actions, which are always instructive, full of light and luminosity, which are good by definition. That Supreme Personality of Godhead is our source, our creator, our benefactor, our father, and our dear most friend. And so we need not to identify with the lower strata of temporary matter. However, we need to look up to the lotus feet of the supreme personality of God who exists above matter and apart from us numerable plural living identities as the singular supreme personality of Godhead, just like the shining sun within the sky. So, therefore, it's not a surprise to enlightened person to come across this verse in the fourth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. Akarmine karma yapasheta karmane chikarmane sabbodhi munmanushu sayukta kritsna karma krit. The devotees of the Lord who are looking 
to connect with the Lord. See material endeavors of sense gratification, mental speculation, and the practice of mystic powers as a total waste of time. The materialists are so active with their concrete clover leaves, their freeways, their cars, and their skyscrapers, going to work, getting up, hitting themselves with a cup of caf caffeine in the morning, getting on the freeway to a long commute, going into the office to sit down under artificial lights and look at a computer screen for eight and 10 hours just in order to get pieces of paper with green ink on them so they can go back home and kick back and take another pill to de-stress and relax. Uh, to them, this is their noses to the grindstone. They are assiduous. They are diligent in pursuing their dreams for sense gratification and for material uh, success. And yet from a spiritual point of view, because it's all related to the eight gross, uh, the five gross elements or the three subtle elements, which are all part of material nature, the inferior qualities of the Lord, it's total waste of time. Total waste of time. And everything that the materialistic civilization has built up and all of its skyscrapers and cities and technology is no more significant in the long run, in the big picture, than the babble of the sea waves on the beach. On the other hand, the materialistic sees one who's chanting Hare Krishna, taking purified prasadam offered to the Lord, associating with devotees, driving for Krishna, singing for Krishna, managing for Krishna, gardening for Krishna, building temples for Krishna, organizing festivals for Krishna, purchasing items for the maintenance of the temple for Krishna, talking to people for Krishna, giving tours for Krishna. The materialistic person, the mental speculation, and the yogi see that as a total waste of time. So we have a divergence of interests. We have a divergence of priorities. Now the difference between the Krishna conscious person and the person in those other three categories of material endeavor is that because all of the results of the Krishna consciousness person are offered to the Supreme Lord in bhakti, in love and devotion, because the Lord is the recipient of the directed energy of his servants, the servants themselves become completely free of the reactions of karma. It is karma. It is the mindless, feverish, illusory pursuit, of temporary material pleasures, which compromises us and entangles us in this material world. And because we come to the end of the current life and we're unfulfilled, we still have appetites, desires, and ambitions which we would like to accomplish. Therefore, we come back again. Therefore, we assume another material body which is an instrument to fulfill the unfulfilled desires of our previous life. Again, Rishabh Dev says, those who are mad after sense gratification, they, they come back again and again and again and again. Why? Because at the time of exiting their previous body, their consciousness is colored, polluted by material appetites, desires, and ambitions. So the current body they have is awarded as an instrument to fulfill the unfulfilled desires of their past life. And as they continue to pursue the phantasmagoria of mind and body in this current life, they are creating for themselves another body, another incarnation, another cycle of birth, death, disease, and old in this material world, just as they did in their past lives, which resulted in this current life. What is the point? What is the goal? What is the gain? It's just like trying for sand, which slips through your fingers. 
So a karmani a karmani apashat a karmani cha karma sha. Devotee sees the only action with value as those actions which put are the root, the fruits of our work are on the altar for the satisfaction of the Lord. Those are the only category of actions. Pure bhakti, not jnana, not karma, not yoga, but only the actions of pure bhakti are pleasing to the Lord. And only when we please the Lord does he become totally active in our lives. Release us. Devi heshu gunami matambaya adaratiya mame bhavya. Mayami Tamtarantidya releases from the clutches of Maya and consequent rebirth in this material world. It is said, a person acting in Krishna consciousness is naturally, without any separate endeavor, the mental speculators may dream or fantasize about liberation, the yogis may talk about mukti, but without any separate endeavor of mental speculation or yoga, simply by offering everything to the Lord, one becomes free of the bonds of karma. It's all achieved just by performing everything for Krishna. The servant does not enjoy or suffer the results of his work. He gives it all to Krishna. The servant craveth not except to serve with might. He was not told to win or lose. He was simply told to fight. Now in this material world, every action brings a reaction. When we try for our own pleasure, when we are the objects, we want to be the consumers and the enjoyers. We want the mental illusory pleasure of owning property which basically belongs to God. There are a lot of negativity which comes back to us. We create ourselves the joys and fears of which the coming life is made and fill our future's atmosphere with sunshine or with shade. If one becomes gradually aware of the boomerang effect of karma, then one may think to solve the problem by becoming inactive, passive, inasmuch as all of my self-centered acts result in a negative reaction, I'm not going to act anymore. If I don't act, then I won't get a reaction. And in this way, my karma will be reduced to nil. The problem is this decision is taken out of fear. It's taken out of fear. There's no positive upliftment. There's no progress. There's no destination in mind. So this type of renunciation is condemned in the Bhagavad Gita as being useless and misleading. We can't, after all, renounce what is not ours in the first place. This body, the energy that we have, the talents and abilities, we didn't create them. We didn't manufacture them. They were gifted to us by Krishna. And so you cannot uh, put them aside. You cannot not use them and be fulfilled in your life. Arjuna asks Krishna this question in the fifth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. Which is better, action or inaction? We say that action, uh, self-centered action, is the cause of all misery. So then inaction must be better, isn't it, Krishna? Krishna does not confirm that hypothesis. He says, right from the first verse of the fifth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, which is all about action and inaction, sanyasham kamaram krishna puna yoga jasam sisi yaksariyata tanme bruhi sanishtitam Krishna says, O oh, Arjuna, O oh, Arjuna, sannyasas, renunciation is certainly good. Renunciation is good. We cannot be attached as eternal spirit souls to that which is temporary. However, renunciation by inactivities is inferior to acting in a spirit of renunciation only for the satisfaction of Krishna. 
between inaction and action in Krishna consciousness. Krishna says to Arjuna, action in Krishna consciousness is much more beneficial. And it's true renunciation. True renunciation. Because even in inaction, you're going to be forced eventually to act. Because that's how we're wired. We can't not act. Nakaramanam anatamam naiskamam paru nacha sanyasara sirim vinanti manavaha. Everybody sooner or later is forced to act. You have to eat. You have to be mobile in order to be healthy, to keep body and soul together. You have to act. And when you act out of Krishna consciousness, there will always be a reaction. So initially, it appears that Arjuna, according to the role that he's played, does not understand that work in full knowledge, in full Krishna consciousness, is non-reactive and is the same thing as inaction in the sense that however hard you work, provided it's in Krishna consciousness, you'll generate not one reaction. On the other hand, as much as you try not to work, as much as you try to be passive and non-reactive, you will, by the very nature of your constitution or makeup, perform works and generate reactions. Arjuna thinks that if he doesn't fight, abdicates the battlefield and goes to a quiet, cool, calm hermitage in the forest, that he will avoid the reactions of fighting and killing. It's not going to happen. Krishna says, you'll be forced to act. You're not made, you're not wired to live in a peaceful, brahminical circumstances. Sooner or later, people will notice your muscles. They'll notice your generosity. They'll notice your protective nature. They'll notice your kindness. And they'll come and say, so and so and so and so did such and such to me, stole my cattle, stole my wife. And, so on. and you'll take up the cause of protecting the poor, the oppressed. So you cannot avoid this. You can, you can leave the battlefield, but you can't leave your nature. Krishna says, if you don't fight, if you don't rise to the occasion as a chatra, as a warrior, but instead try for inactivity, passivity, peacefulness, serenity, Brahmanism, you will be forced by your nature to act nevertheless. But if you act according to your nature under my instructions, if you fight not for yourself, not for your own purposes, but you fight according to my orders, even if you cause blood to flow, you lop heads off of bodies, you make children orphans and women widows, it's horrible, it's ghastly, there's nothing pleasant or comely about warfare. Nevertheless, Krishna says, I am a buffer between you and karmic reactions. In spite of causing violence in the extreme, Krishna says, acting in full Krishna consciousness under my order for my satisfaction, even in the midst of a ghastly, gory, bloody battlefield, you will not incur even the slightest tinge of a karmic reaction. This is true renunciation. This is truly the path of transcendence in the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, 258th first, second chapter, first wave. Sri Rupa Goswami says, Prapanchi Kataya Buddha, Hari Shambhana Vashtana, Mamukseve Parijaga, Vairagam Palgu Kalyate. It says that when persons eager to achieve liberation from material bondage renounce things related to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, thinking them to be material, their renunciation is incomplete. What then makes renunciation complete? Renunciation becomes complete not by artificially giving up 
your duty born of your nature, um, not by um, becoming passive or inactive, but your knowledge becomes complete when you realize that everything in existence belongs to the Lord. And I can't claim proprietorship over anything in the first place. If I can't claim proprietorship over anything in the first place, if everything belongs to the Lord, then how can I renounce that which was not mine in the first place? Probably made a joke one time. We were in Australia and he gave this example. If I walk past the Bank of America and I say, I renounce the Bank of America. You don't own the Bank of America. What's the meaning of your renouncing the Bank of America? It's artificial. Krishna says, Anasita karma phalam kayam karma karoti cha sanyasiti jo na niragnina chakriya anasita karma phalam. It's not he who doesn't act. But one who acts in full knowledge in Krishna consciousness is the actual yogi, not one who lights no fire and performs one's work. One who knows that everything is Krishna's property and steps forward to steward Krishna's property, to reclaim ground for the kingdom, to work on behalf of the mission, to acquire temples, to organize festivals, to print books, to cook prasadam, to receive guests and visitors, to caretake Krishna's cows and animals, to grow Krishna's food, is true renunciation. Since everything belongs to Krishna, it is consequential that everything should be employed in the service of Krishna. This is the perfect form of action slash renunciation in Krishna consciousness and our conclusion today at the end of Motivational Monday according to the authority of the Supreme Personality of Godhead as described to his friend and disciple Arjuna, according to the opinion of the greatest of all sages amongst the demigods, Narada Muni as passed down to his disciple Vyasadeva and is according to the pure devotee, son of Vyasadeva, Sukadeva Goswami, as he communicated this to Maharaj Prikit during the last seven days of his life, action in Krishna consciousness is far better than any amount of artificial renunciation. Om Tat Sat. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama, Rama. Hadi, hadi. Thanks very much for being with us. Let's see if I can figure out who's here. Have a really truncated, limited view. Anjali, Hare Krishna, welcome to MM Motivational Monday. Govinda Dev, good morning. I heard you're out of town. Nice that you could drop in, nevertheless. By Bobby Davy Dasi, my favorite person in the whole world. Yes. Rupa Manjari. I don't think she's missed a single session in the whole year that we've been on Zoom. If she can't be personally present, she goes on to um, our YouTube channel. Um, we invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Things will be sent to you automatically as they are produced. We have 850 subscribers. We're trying for 1,000 in the next six months. William Griffith. Thank you very much. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for your likes, for your stars. If you're new especially, let us know that you've jumped on. Let us know what your impression of. Give us your suggestions, your comments, your feedback, so we can make this program better and better as time goes on. Bhakti Gary, Hare Krishna Bhakti Gary, please accept my obeisances. Subhadra, another regular Hare Krishna Subhadra, Sabita, an occasional visitor. Nice that you could drop in today, Sabita. Rakesh, right here in Salt Lake City, Rakesh, Bhavana, Subi, we were together in our weekly Zoom call yesterday. Uh, Raleigh, Raleigh and his wife do a magnificent job with the prasadam. Our buffet here in Spanish Fork is open seven days a week, can you believe it? between 12 and 6 o'clock. If you live in Utah and you want the healthiest, most economical vegetarian lunch, 
that's available in South Utah County. Come on by. Keep it hot for you. Shukshma, she's coming up. She's on her way from Houston. She'll be in Salt Lake City tomorrow night for the gala celebration of the appearance of Lord Nishring of the Half Man, Half Lion Incarnation with special bathing ceremony, special feast, and special guest, Anuruma Das, head of ISKCON Public Relations and GVC there on the East Coast. So those are all the ones that I can see that have commented. We appreciate your having done that. Uh, we encourage you to go ahead and comment even after we end this broadcast. You'll, the material will still be available to view. You'll still be able to comment. And I will, I'm going to the kitchen now, as I do Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So um, I won't be able to answer you right away, most likely, but I will get back to you. And those of you know, I always, I always get back to you because it's the favorite part of my day is interacting with those who are committed to joining us here for our transcendental sessions Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So thank you very much. Please chant throughout the day and meditate on the specialness of tomorrow in as much as it is the appearance day of the half man, half lion incarnation of Lord Krishna. Sri Nishringadev Ki Jai. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. I should ask Rob also, any any final comments, Rob, there? <laughs> Thank you, Prabhupada It's great to see you today. I, um, I, I would say that don't strive for sense, uh, sense gratification um, for yourself. Um, and don't, even though it's better still, don't strive for renunciation of the senses, but instead strive to please Krishna through your senses um, and by serving him and by putting his gratification before your own. And actually, we, that's how we enjoy also. We don't um, give up sense gratification, but we enjoy through serving Krishna. That's where the real sense gratification lies. So thank you as always. Very concise to the point. We always like to get the last word from Rob when he's available. Appreciate that and appreciate all of you who have joined us for Motivational Monday. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama, Rama. Hare, Hare.